So this is going to be a little bit of a break from the norm as far as what kind of videos I normally do. But uh, lately I've been playing uh, with these devices. And um, for those that haven't seen, uh, likely because I'm going to upload this video before the other ones, uh, but these are uh, basically emulator devices made by a company called Anbernic. A-N-B-E-R-N-I-C. Uh, this one in particular is the RG350. Uh, this was provided to me by Banggood for the purpose of a video. Uh, that is not this video. Um, that will be linked in the description if you're curious. Uh, but basically I was just doing a, um, you know, a, a hands-on um, and really like a review of these sort of things. But there were a few little... Um, issues, I guess, uh, that I found with this console. And again, you can take a look at the other videos if you want some more information. Um, but it sums up to, I didn't like how big the stock joysticks were, as in they stuck out tremendous amount. Um, you can see that better from this angle. You can see this set about that high and you can see how much higher that is. I have modified joysticks in there right now. I have better ones on the way. These ones I just 3D printed, but these are the stock ones that come with it. Anyway, the other problem I want to address is the screen on this thing. So I don't know how well you can see it, but if you can see that little bit of a sliver on the top right hand corner here, you can see that my screen is physically not installed straight in this device. Uh, now I could just open it up and straighten it out. But I found out there's actually a, um, an, an upgrade that can be installed in this thing. So there are three different models of the RG350 by Anbernic here. There's the one that I have, the original RG350. Uh, there's the RG350P, I think. I don't know. Uh, it's basically the same thing, but it swaps the position of the joystick and D-pad on the left here, so you have the D-pad on the top, joystick on the bottom. And then you have the RG350M, which does the same thing, it swaps the joystick. You get a machined, a CNC machined aluminum housing, and you get an upgrade to the screen. You get a laminated LCD instead of this junk that's that comes with this one, and it is a higher resolution. So the one that's in this unit is a 320 by 240 LCD, whereas the one that comes in the RG350M is a 640 by 480 laminated LCD. Well, I found out that you can purchase that LCD and that it is a mostly stock drop-in for this unit. So we are gonna have to do a little bit of modification uh, both to the hardware and to the software to get it working, but I think it could be a pretty neat upgrade uh, so again, this is a 640 by 480 LCD, which is, whereas this one is 320 by 240. I uh, was going to load it into game and just just to show off that you know it, it does work pretty well on the emulator. Uh, but even though this is 320 by 240 screen, this particular game in this particular section actually runs at 640 by 480, which is why this text is so small and unreadable, and a lot of the text right here is pretty blurry too. I mean, it's perfectly usable, but it's less than ideal, I think. Uh, but let me go ahead and load it in. And once we get into the actual game itself, you see it swaps resolution, the text gets bigger, and then you can see it's now 320 by 240. And it's perfectly fine. So I don't expect to see any difference in the like overworld here, but if we go into the menu, it's gonna swap again. And then the text gets kind of blurry and messy. I don't like it. So let's see if we can't fix it. Um, now, I was under the impression that the uh, upgraded screen will basically just plug in, plug and play, as long as you install the screen driver. And um, I think that should be pretty easy. So let me go ahead and get this oops, powered down and we can start tearing it apart. And uh, we'll talk about the screen upgrade. So I am gonna to have to do the software part of this off screen, um, but I'll walk you through what I'm doing and I'll even link to another resource to do it, but I'll try and do all the hardware stuff on screen. And again, even though this video, even though this unit was provided to me by, uh, 
oh god was it banggood yeah i think it was banggood um and I'll, I'll i'll throw a link to uh the storefront that provided this to me it's actually a really cool unit i'm very impressed with it not for game boy games per se but for playstation at least um I will also throw a link to the Anbernick official AliExpress store where I got this. It was about 30 bucks. A little bit pricey for uh, an LCD alone, uh, especially if you already have to purchase this unit. On that note, you might as well just purchase the one that comes with that already comes with it. Uh, but anyway, four screws, off comes the recover. The battery is attached to it. Be careful, so you'll have to unplug it. Um, SD card. I did upgrade the SD card that uh, came with this device to a new SD card. All I did was just I, I imaged the old SD card onto a new one because these devices do not come with the most high quality SD cards. So just as a precautionary measure, I upgraded it. And this one on the inside here on this device on the 350p and 350m the other two versions of this it's actually just on the bottom here you don't have to open it up to get to this uh, but this is what we'll have to update a file on to get the new screen working uh, but i don't know i just wanted to make an image of the old one and pop it onto a new sd card before something happened you know just in case And so far that did prove to be a good idea because I did mess something up. I genuinely don't know if we have to take these out. Uh, I will take this one out though because it looks like one of the wires runs under the screw posts and we need to get this motherboard out. So the joysticks are on these little modular pads. You can pop it out and just, just to show off, they have these these really cool little um, like standard stick design it's all metal and it's tiny as all heck but just for a comparison on the stick size let me stick that stock stick that stick stick that stick back on there flip it over and you can see how much bigger that is compared to that this is still more than usable in my opinion this of course does work better and feel better but it's just too big. I, I think it really ruins the portability of this device, so I don't use it. I prefer the 3D printed one. I'll throw a link to the 3D printed one. Uh, you can just pull the file off of the thingiverse and print it yourself or send it to someone like Shapeways to do for you, which I printed it myself and then I ordered some off Shapeways. Um, those should actually be here within the next few days probably make a video when I get those two just just to talk about it because this is this is a cool device I think I think there is definitely a place for devices like these in the uh, retro gaming community all right looks like these are all the same screws so it doesn't matter too much if they get mixed up slide up pull that off and then we can pull this out except for the speakers and if you're very careful about what you're doing this is as much as you need to take it apart I'm gonna keep going though because this is my first time this deep into one of these things and I would just like to make it as easy as possible on myself. Right. These buttons I hear are an absolute pain in the C next Tuesday. So we'll find out about that. And then I believe this whole bezel is supposed to slide off. 
could always just desolder the speakers, but looks like the whole module comes out. Oh, and she got the bezel off. All right, set that aside. It's important. Don't lose it. All right. So now we are left with the LCD and the front frame and the lens. I'm going to remove that. Does that come out? Yeah. I'm going to remove that before it falls out and I lose it. This looks to be a little light pipe for the power and status LEDs. All right, so this probably comes out by just, uh, I, I'm pretty sure this is adhered down. Um, come to think of it, there's not much I could do to straighten it. It looks like it's just crooked in this frame. To be clear, this tape doesn't need to come off. I'm just checking to see if it's hiding any gaps in the LCD frame, which it does not. So I have no idea how this thing ended up crooked. All right, so just for comparison, here's a good look at the stock LCD. It is 035QHI-FPCV.1. Uh, there's not a whole lot else on the ribbon cable. There appears to be a little resistor right there and some solder pads and then the backlight cable. And if we take a look at the new higher resolution unit, we have a completely different number. WL-355608-A8. We have backlight cable there again, but we have quite a bit more on the ribbon cable itself. There's a little, um, looks like 10 or 12 pin IC soldered down and seven capacitors. But the uh, ribbon cable itself is the same length, same connector, um, same size, just about the same everything. So anyway, let's get back to taking this apart. Heat will probably help, but I don't think it's stuck down that hard. And worst case scenario, I break it. I'm literally already replacing it anyway. I prefer not to, but if it comes down to it, I'm prepared to make the sacrifice. One interesting thing we can do is we can unclip the metal frame and then drop the LCD out and then pry the frame out without worrying about damage in the LCD. Let's see if it's any easier from the other side. Not having any luck, so I'm going to go to twisting, and that appears to be working. Ooh, nice, we got the frame all bent out of whack. I'm sure that's fine. Yeah, LCD looks a little bit bent, not gonna lie. Probably fine. Not the best idea. Uh, I'm just gonna see if I ruined it now. Why not? After getting my fingers all over it. Uh, 
is nothing would be more rewarding than breaking this LCD and then finding out the other one I just got is also broken. That would be, that would make my day. Need that SD card to boot. Yep, LCD is fine. Ooh, that's gonna be a pain in the butt to turn off, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you never, these things are basically computers, so you don't wanna just yank the power. Um, Bad things can happen if you do that. I need to find that little membrane I just dropped. Excuse me for just, oh, never mind. I found it already. Okay. All right. So now let's get this lens out of here. We got to remove the stock lens because the new LCD comes with one laminated to it. Comes off nice and easy. Glass lens. All right, and this is going to go in here. The cutout is the exact same size, but we do need to modify the uh, opening to drop this LCD in from the front. So unfortunately, that means cutting from all sides. Ooh, I don't like how the ribbon just stuck down. Peel up some of this tape before more bad things happen. So, and again, it would be, I think it's probably smarter to just buy the one that comes with the uh, screen that you want. Um, not to mention you get that metal body. But, you know, you do you. I will say, I like... I like the idea of upgrading this one more than I like the idea of just buying the other one. Because I do genuinely like that the joystick is on top on this one. And you can't get that on the uh, other one. Whereas on this one, you have both screen options because you can just upgrade it, more or less. Now, get the rest of them. In a wee bit. I'll probably end up doing most of the trimming off camera because it's gonna take a while. And I know this video is already going to be ridiculously long, but if we line that up, you can see sorta of how much we need to trim off. All we need to do is trim off enough to get the uh, rear of the LCD to fit through the front but not so much that we can't actually stick the uh, bezel of the lens down. And you can see approximately how much you need to trim off by just lining the LCD up on the side. And for the left, right, and top, there's barely anything that you need to trim off, but for the bottom, you need to take quite, a, quite the chunk. So bear with me just a sec, I'm gonna get the rest of this tape off. All right, so got that not perfectly cleaned up, but more than good enough to work with. Uh, I can finish cleaning up later when I'm laying down new, new adhesive. Uh, all right, so let us start by marking off approximately how much we need to trim. Uh, this is, of course, a uh, 
Measure twice, cut once thing. You can always take off more material than you need. Or you can always take off more material later. Uh, but you can't put it back once it's gone. So I'm going to start on the bottom here. And for the most part, I'm eyeballing it. But, you know, I'm, a, I'm seasoned. I know what I'm doing. I'm a professional. I'm going to start by scoring, making a score mark. Very lightly. And I'm going to go back over that line, applying a little bit more pressure. If it slips, it's no big deal. I'm just going to switch sides again. Make sure it doesn't slip into that um, misalignment again. And I'm just going to keep going until it goes through. This is very thin plastic. We don't even need to do the score and snap. We can just cut straight through it. this a little bit off and we can't really test it until I trim off the rest of the sides here but that's not gonna stop me from trying anyway and you can see I did not take off enough material but that's fine we can come back later I need to do the same thing for the other sides now going to line it up, see how much I need to take off, which is approximately half of what's there, more or less. Nope, less, not more. I think I got a little bit overzealous with that one. That's okay. It's probably worth mentioning that it would be smart to test the uh, screen before making these modifications to your case. Uh, I did not because I didn't think of that until just now. But. Because you watch these videos in their entirety before doing this to your own unit, you have the benefit of my hindsight. That's how that goes, right? All right, there's that side. I'm gonna keep going. Let's do the top now. Same thing, a little bit less than half. It's okay if you cut a little bit too much, not the end of the world. It would be better if you didn't. It'll still be okay. It is impressive how thin this plastic is. Last side here. And same thing as usual.
Very soft material. All right, let's see if it fits. Probably doesn't because I think I still got to take a little bit more off the bottom. But top fits, the left side fits, the right side does not. Here's what we can do about that. Just take a little bit off at a time. And now look at that top left and right fit perfectly we just need to take a little bit more off the bottom and one thing when using knives like this is you always have to be perfectly cognizant of where the knife is going to go when it slips. Not if, when. I feel comfortable cutting towards my fingers because if the knife slips here, it should get caught on the plastic frame. Uh, that is not, ooh, see it slipped there. Good thing I wasn't cutting towards myself. Um, and that is an example of why, how I was just cutting was probably dumb. I got away with it because I'm lucky, but you got to be careful. Don't be dumb. I mean, unless you want to be dumb, that's your prerogative, but don't cry to me when you cut yourself. Alright, I think I cut a little bit too much. Got a little bit carried away. That is quite all right. Nope, actually we still gotta cut just a little bit more. Or not, actually that is going to be fine. I'm gonna cut a little bit more because it's kind of bowing out at the bottom. But, come on. There we go. I'll just hold it like that. There we go. I think we're going to be all right. <laughs> oh, you know what? We probably could have just followed these lines on the inside. That would have made more sense. Because look at basically what it's lined up to.
Oh, here I am doing that stupid cutting again. I was too busy looking at the outside. I didn't even stop to look at the inside. Makes it way easier. Up already yeah, mostly all right cool 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 just drops right in there and look at that looks factory because it is mostly uh, but now we need some adhesive <clears throat> uh, but first I think I might take a take a sec to clean up all this so I don't get adhesive uh, so I don't get shavings in my adhesive one moment please right 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 so next up we need some adhesive and unfortunately there's not a lot to grip uh, but we'll make it work. I am going to use this 3M 300 LSE tape. Um, this is this is the bee's knees for um, sticky double-sided tape. If, if you're watching this video and you're a regular of mine, you probably have tons of the stuff laying around from like um, the centers of Game Boy screen lenses. You can just cut this stuff up and use the exact same, it's the exact same tape. If you're not a regular of mine, you've come in from the great beyond because this is different. Um, you can get this stuff online. This particular roll I think I grabbed from DigiKey. It was not the cheapest, but it's not a knockoff and it wasn't that expensive either. Uh, but anyway, I am going to cut a strip long enough for the bottom and then cut it to size. There's a hair on the long side, but we'll make it work. Not a huge deal if it is slightly too long. If only these things had uh, adhesive pre-applied. And by these things, I specifically mean the screens. Not the console, because the console did have adhesive pre-applied. I just got done scraping it all off, remember. I can't believe I spent all that time trying to line it up from the outside when I could just cut it from the inside. Whoopsie doodles. Ooh, that is a big strip. I think that'll be fine. Mm -hmm. 
This stuff is very thin, so I'm counting on it just folding over when I insert the LCD. Or I could also cut off the excess from the inside. But we'll try folding it over, see if that works. And one last strip, and we'll be good. It's almost ready. Of course, I still have to take a few minutes to get the uh, software side of things sorted. But I was going to do that last so I can show you what happens if you um, forget to do that part. Rather, what the console looks like if you forget to do that part. Oops. And the off chance someone needs to troubleshoot something weird. Cool, cool, cool. stuff there, make sure that's nice and stuck down. And this should seem, this should be obvious, this should be total common sense. But make sure it's upright, the D-pad is on the left, not the right. Because this looks pretty darn identical, you know? in there, press it down, and that should be good. Now this tape does require some pressure to make sure that it um, really grips properly, but I can't do that until I get this thing put together. Not, not well anyway, so. Which one's Y? Is that Y? Where's that Y? Oh god. I've forgotten. No. 
D-pad membrane, AXBY membrane are the same. There we go. Pretty sure the start and select buttons are the same as well. Put the light pipe back in. And then what did we need to do? We needed to put... Oh god, which way does that go? Oh shit, I should have put the speakers in. Uh -huh. Also forgot the D-pad. I'm gonna pop the screen out. The old screen at the very least. Go. This goes a little something like this. Oh, it looks like those can go in last. Let's do that last then. Pretty sure it would be wise to put in the bottom buttons first. So I'm just gonna do one screw on each side to hold things together. And the screws have these little white silk screen around them, so you know what goes where. Ooh, and that definitely had to go in first. supposed to be sideways? I don't remember. I guess so. Let's try it. Let's see if this will work. Probably not, but we'll try it. That didn't work, but it will work. We just gotta remove these speakers. The speakers gotta go in last.
Now I've seen uh, another person use, uh, they just had tape on the outside of the buttons to hold them in. But this seems like it should work just as well. There we go. Easy. These things are incredibly clever little devices. I'm actually really pleased. And time consuming it was, but that was uh, so far a pretty darn easy upgrade. Hopefully the rest of this install is as straightforward as that was. And by the rest of this install, I just mean uh, fixing up the software and then just using it. Now there is another upgrade that I saw for these things where you can swap out the entire stick module with like a 3DS slider pad. And that does seem pretty neat, but my aversion to that is you lose the clicky button, the L3 and R3, if you do that, and um, I'm not sure I like that. Also it's basically glued in. It's not a very polished modification, I think. Alright, so we gotta plug the screen in, that's kind of an important step. I totally forgot about this part. Oh man. That is really disappointing. It's like when you build a PC and. Oh, never mind. I was gonna say when you forget about that IO shield, but you can actually install that after the fact. So it's really not that bad. Let's try it out. You can see it's turning on, but there is nothing on the screen. Uh, so that is exactly what happens when you do not install the um, driver, as it were. And to fix that, I'm going to give it a minute, make sure it is completely booted up, and then I'm just going to yank the power because unfortunately I can't safely shut it down like this. But I think we will be okay. Um, I am going to pause for a moment and get the uh, driver, as it were, updated on the SD card, and I will be back with you in just, just a, just a hot sec. Alright, so I got the SD card up, 
updated. I will, again, there will be a link in the description. There is a guide from RetroGameCore.com. They have been extraordinarily helpful throughout this entire process, um, just all the guides that they have. And unfortunately, while I was updating, I realized I completely forgot a step. So we have to pull all of this apart again. And this is something that definitely should have been done before testing it, but hopefully didn't cause any issues. The new screen did come with a um, insulator that is supposed to be installed on the back of it. I really think it should come pre-installed on the screen, but you know, beggars can't be choosers, I guess. Pop that out, pop that out. Now there is probably not a single issue if you choose not to install that thing and then this, install that insulator and then this thing just never leaves your desk. But that is not a chance I would like to take if I can avoid it. So I'm going to flip that up. I'm just going to leave the screen plugged in. And then here is the insulator. Just on a sticky pad. I am actually going to grab my spudger. So that when I peel this off, I have something to stick it to that ain't my finger. He says as he immediately grabs it with his fingers. Alright. It is a little bit off center, but we're going to be okay. And assembly, reverse disassembly, something like that. does not matter which stick goes in which side as long as you have the orientation correct such that the uh, connector is facing the ribbon. It'll, uh, it'll just work. It's a symmetrical design.
right, let's pop this bad boy in. And let's try it out. I got the SD card in, I've got it updated. So we should just have to plug this in and we should be good. And... Hey, there it goes. That looks heaps better already. Still got the same theme and everything. My clock is reset because I had the battery out. Uh, that's problematic, but that could be because I had it powered up and then I yanked the power. I don't really know what to do about that aside from um, restoring the SD card that I had. Uh, so I guess that's what I gotta do right now because my only other SD card does not have the um, updated driver, as it were. So I will be right back. I'm going to update this SD card, do the old swap and we'll go from there. I don't know if this is the solution, but I found a solution. Uh, I just went ahead and pulled a brand new SD card, formatted it, and then threw the RG350M firmware on it instead of the RG350 firmware. Seems to be working fine, but uh, it's missing all of my emulators, ROMs, saves, etc. So I just threw the old SD card into the slot there, and then hit copy, and it's going. It's going to be a while though, so I'll be back. Hood. That day, that took a long time. Um, so, to be fair, this did, this did finish copying a little while ago. I didn't notice it because I was working on something else. But uh, it only finished about 20 to 30 minutes ago. Um, it finished copying everything, and while it was copying... Uh, how do I quit this? There we go. While it finished copying or while it was copying, I did a little bit more research on how to do this the proper way instead of the way I thought. And I went ahead and built a brand new SD card for this thing. Um, 32 gigabyte, we're upgrading the storage. Uh, and I should already have the files copied over. So I'm just gonna pull this off and swap out this junk SD card that I was just fooling around with because I don't actually want to use this permanently. I'd be very, very disappointed to lose all my files. And we have this one. By the way, I think I also know why that upgrade, just swapping out that vmlanus.bin or whatever it is, uh, why swapping out the screen driver file didn't work for me. Uh, I think it's because I'm on a different version of the software with working HDMI because apparently when this thing came out, this port did nothing. Uh, I think on mine, the port does something. But anyway, should have plenty of games. Copied over my games. Uh, you'll notice, unfortunately, the uh, screen menu is kind of kind of blurry. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Those aren't the games I copied over. Did I actually forget to copy my game? Oh my goodness. Hmm. I wonder if it'll let me just run it off the uh, SD card. Hopefully it will. So anyway, yeah, I just re-imaged a brand new SD card. 
uh, with the RG350M firmware because once you install this screen, your player is to be considered an RG350M, not an RG350. Uh, while I was in there, I also went ahead and updated all the emulators, so it shouldn't, shouldn't give us any difference. Uh, it's still using the actual PlayStation BIOS, which is a um, copy written piece of software. You can't, can't just download that. Uh, you're supposed to dump it from your own PlayStation, which I did do. Um, but th this isn't that file. This is the file that actually came with it because for some reason Amber Nick thinks it's okay to just ship um, pirated software. Um, forgive me. It was easier to use the one that was already on there instead of going to pull the one off my PlayStation. Uh, but I swear, I do have one dumped somewhere. I gotta find it. Um, what was I looking for? I wanted to show FPS on... So we can see, of course, this new screen is going to make zero difference when the emulator is running at 320 by uh, 240. That is loud. But if you'll notice, it is now running at 640 by 480. We'll go continue. Should have my save data. Yes, it does. And look at that. Look at how much you can read. Look at how much better. That is, that looks heaps better. That is a night and day difference. I am, after looking at this, all of my worries went away and I am now so happy I did this upgrade. It was a pain in the butt. Uh, oops. Uh-oh, that's awkward. I'm trying to remember the menu. There we go. Look at that menu. Look at how much better that looks. Heaps better. Now, of course, I'm not very far in this game at all. Um, shows I'm four, almost four hours into this game. I'm not going to lie. I got about 45 minutes in and then literally just set the thing down for about three hours. Um, I was just kind of testing the battery life. But... This looks so much better. When the game is actually running at the high resolution, this is night and day difference. That is amazing. Holy cow. I'm sorry. I'm... I didn't expect it to be such a noticeable difference. This is so much better. I highly recommend. If you have one of these, Spend the $33, get the new screen, swap it in. Um, spend a few hours stumbling head over heels trying to figure out how to set up the new firmware on this. I'll link a guide, I promise. Um, the TLDR of that is you just get a new SD card. Don't bother reformatting the one it comes with. Get a new SD card, set it up with the RG350M firmware. Uh, download all the emulators that you actually care about. Again, linked in the guide below. They make it super easy. Uh, I believe it's Retro Game Core. They have updated links to newest drivers because software does get updated on this thing quite frequently. Um, newer drivers tend to run a little bit better, a little bit smoother. Have uh, updates installed. Oh, now it's showing me both. See, now that I have the other SD card plugged in, it's pulling the emulators from that one, too. So I don't know which one is which one is which. It's probably the new one. Let's run a quick... Ooh, this isn't my ROMs either. I copied the wrong ROMs folder. That is really annoying. Uh... I hate this. I I don't like that they just pack these things full of ROMs. I really wish they would just give you the software and tell you to go nuts with your own ROMs. I understand why they do it, because I'm not going to lie, getting files onto this thing was kind of a pain in the butt. But, yeah. I guess, let's just do Mystery. Feeling. 
Image scaling, none. See, that looks pretty good. I'll have to refer back to my um, previous video to see if that's significantly different, but I know I know a 320 by 240 screen can't do a 240 by 160 image with linear scaling. This, on the other hand, looks like linear scaling, which I am very pleased with. The uh, 351 going to be heaps better for Game Boy Advance, no question, but this is still better than it was. Hardware. Yeah, that looks terrible. Hardware 2X. That, on the other hand, I'm okay with that. It's still a little bit blurry, but it's much better than hardware. Hardware scan Burt. Oh, there you go. You have your, your pixel grid emulation for those of you nostalgia purists. Scan horizontal, same thing, just horizontal instead of vertical. Wonder if there's an option for both. Hardware grid, yeah, there you go. That is, uh, it's all right. I, I don't hate it. I don't hate it. It's way better than it was. Hardware scale X2, ooh, that is gross. I mean, actually, Actually, it works well with the art style for this game. <laughs> the text looks terrible, but that works well for the art style of this game. Aspect fast, that's terrible. Full fast, that's also terrible. Aspect bilinear, terrible. Full bilinear, yeah, no. Oops. Shoot. I think that was the last one, though. Oh, aspect subpixel. Yeah, I don't like that. Full subpixel. It's the same thing, just... Yeah. So yeah, hardware 2x, hardware grid, hardware scale 2x. No, not hardware scale 2x. Hardware grid or hardware 2x are, I think, the way to go on this after upgrading the... Uh, the display. Interframe blending. I think that should add some transparency effects. Alright. That's... Man, that is just heaps better. I am so impressed. How do I exit? There we go. Start. Uh, let's try... So you can see one of these is the upgraded version. Oh, but I don't know which is which. Not that one. Pocket snes, pocket snes. Ooh. Okay, we'll have to try both. Uh, October twenty four, twenty twenty. This is the problem with just jamming your SD card in there. Uh, yeah, September 2, 2017. So we want the other one because the other one has some optimizations. Should run a little bit smoother. Might have better settings. Settings, hardware scaling, original. Ooh, that looks way better. Original is good. Original is very good. Fast. That is terrible. Don't ever use that. Smooth. That's usable, but there's better options. Oops. Should have stayed on the same one. 
And then hardware again. Oops, not. Yeah, original. Original. Stay on original. Look at how sharp that is. Look at how good that looks. Mm. And yeah, it's running at a full 60 FPS. That's fine. That's what we want. Ooh, the buttons are. The buttons are exactly what they're supposed to be. They're just... I'm used to the GBA version. When you play the weird version for so long, the proper version feels weird. And I just want to play through this and see if this also fixed my weird stuttering issue that I was having when I first checked this out. I think it did. Uh, what's the button? That's the button. I also don't have any shoulder buttons right now. It's kind of a pain in the butt. I don't think this game uses them though. I think I only played through the one level when I uh, checked this out the first time. So yeah, updating the emulator was a good call. Heaps better. Man, this, this screen has totally changed my opinion of this device. I didn't think it was bad, but it is such an absurdly good upgrade. Oh my goodness. Um, I don't think I have anything else I can try, though. I don't know which is which again. Tetris Metroid 2. I gotta fix this ROM nonsense though. I wanna put my ROMs on it and play my games. At least they're actually in alphabetical order for Game Boy. Well. Mostly. I'm surprised there's no Pokemon. Okay, they're in alphabetical order starting at 50. <laughs> oh, there's Pokemon on that one. I just like Pokemon because it's the same one I usually test with. God, it even has my save. I don't remember doing a save. It's definitely me. Why would the game have Mako? Select Scaler. That doesn't look good. Hardware 1.5 looks pretty good. No scaling, of course, looks fantastic, but, you know, that's a, that's a big bezel. I think hardware 1.5 is the best compromise. Looks great to me. It doesn't even look like 1.5 scaling. If it were 1.5 scaling, I'd have two different size eyes. Looks like, looks like 3x to me, actually. Huh. 
Either way, I'm, I'm happy with that. I'd have to look at that under a close-up to see for sure. Yeah, that that this is a game changer. This LCD is quite literally a game changer. Oh, I'm sorry. I've been naughty. I should have peeled that off hours ago. Uh, what else should we check out? Nothing. We're not going to check anything else out. I am going to shut this thing down. And... I am going to reinstall the shoulder buttons and then close it up and then we are done. Done, done, done. And then I am going to go play more Chrono Cross because I have not had an excuse to play that game in years. And while I do have a PlayStation, a working one at that, it's not plugged in. I don't, I don't have a TV that it looks good on. You really need a CRT if you're uh, playing actual old consoles, or you need a line doubler to plug it into. so that you can play it on your 4K Ultra HD, blah, blah, blah. All right, so after wasting all that time with that SD card, got the new one set up, much better, happier with it. I have shoulder buttons. This screen is This, oh my god. It's genuinely disappointing that this device did not come with this screen in the first place. This is by far the best upgrade you can get for one of these things. Um, the single only reason you should go for the RG350M over the other two models should be the screen. Um, I mean, if you, if, I mean, obviously if you like the, the metal shell, then yeah, that's, that's good too. But the, the screen, it's just, it's so much better. Look at how clean that looks. Okay. I could go on and on and on and on about the nice screen all night, but I'm not going to. So I am going to wrap it up here. I've got the old screen. I, I did actually clean it up. I'm not a monster. I didn't clean the outside because there's no point in cleaning the outside. But I um, cleaned up the inside of the lens and then the front of the LCD and then just stuck it onto the old lens like it's laminated. And if for any reason I ever accidentally break this, I can drop this in again. I'll have to switch my firmware back, but it's doable. Um, also, did I mention it's laminated, so it's right up against the glass, and it looks so much better. Okay. Anyway, I'm done. Sorry. Drop my Google eyes. Um, yeah. Check out the link for description on guides on how to mess with this stuff. Oh, um, I recommend getting intimate with Linux. You can do everything you need to do on Windows. It's so much easier to do it on Linux. Um, if you need to do any file copies, just pop the SD card out, pop it in. You don't have to deal with any of that FTP bullshit or transferring through the very, very, very slow TF card, uh, which is what I'm about to do because I don't feel like taking it apart again and then booting up my laptop again. Uh, I'd rather just click and then wait for it to finish. So I'm off to go do that. Thanks for watching. Um, have a good night. Links in the description.